It's so great to see you again for another episode of SCF Jalai. Science Club for Girls Live. I'm Hannah with Science Club, and that was Mr. Music with your theme song. Ooh, a little change today. I like it. I'm so happy that everyone is here today. I see some familiar faces. I see Bonnie and Claire and Cecilia and Nika and so many others. I'm really happy that you were able to join us again. And today is a really special episode because today we are going to celebrate with density. Before we jump into today's episode though, let's talk about last week. Last week, we explored our heart and circulatory system. We saw how the heart works like a pump to circulate blood throughout our body. And in that blood, we have some really important nutrients and oxygen that our muscles need to work properly. We also saw how exercise is a really important way to move that blood and oxygen to our muscle. So I thought, what better way to start today's episode than by working our circulatory system? And to do that, we're going to have a little dance party. But I know someone who loves dance parties who's going to want to join, and that is Dr. Marbles. Let us bring him in. Marbles! Hey, Dr. Marbles! Hey, Hannah! Hey! Hey, I'm so glad that you introduced yourself like that. That was a great entrance. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so glad. Dr. Marbles, are you ready to have a quick little dance party to work our circulatory system? Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Do uh, Mr. Music, I almost called you Dr. Music. That kind of sounds a little more professional. Mr. Music, would you mind playing us a quick little tune? Everyone at home, join in! That was fun, wasn't it? That was awesome. Great. Well, now that we've worked our circulatory system, I'm ready to do a little bit more celebrating today. But, Dr. Marbles, do you want to see something cool? I'd love to. Okay, well, after watching last week's episode, one of our young scientists, Cecilia, was inspired to do an experiment of her own. Now, I want to show you what it looks like, because it's pretty cool. Are you ready to take a look? Yep. Cool. Water, milk, two drops of red food coloring, two drops of blue food coloring. Wow. Those are amazing colors. Isn't that cool? Those are gorgeous colors. I know. And I love how Cecilia used our color episode to practice doing some color mixing. She yeah. mixed together red and blue, and it made that really pretty purple. I'll tell you what. You know what that made me think of? What did that make you think of? Ah. Uh, Made me really, 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 really dizzy. Oh no! Was it that crazy swirl that she created? Yeah, it was all the kind of circles and swirls. It almost hypnotized me. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Cecilia. Now, take a look at this. Yeah. What I love about Cecilia's experiment was she was able to create these really cool layers. See at the top, there's that really thin layer, and then at the bottom is all these different colors. Now, what's really cool about those layers is that they were formed because those liquids have different densities. Densities. Do you remember that word, Dr. Marbles? I totally remember it. Yeah, we talked about it in our food episode. And yeah. I was so inspired by Cecilia's experiment that I decided to dedicate today's entire episode to density. What do you think? I was hoping you were gonna say that when you were like, I'm gonna dedicate this whole show to I'm like, oh, please let her say density. Please let her say density. And you did. I did. I made your day. I'm happy to do that. Well, I'm hoping that in today's episode, we can make something as beautiful as Cecilia did with density. Great. Okay. I'll bring you back in a bit, Marbles. Please do. All right. Cool. So today we are going to explore with density. And I think what better way to start than by making fireworks in a jar? Because it is 4th of July this weekend, and I'd love to celebrate, but 
can't really do fireworks, so why not bring it inside? So for this experiment, you're gonna need a few different things. The first thing you're gonna need is a cup or a jar. Make sure it's clear, because that way you can really see the beautiful fireworks. You're also gonna need some hot water, not hot, but just warm water, some vegetable oil, a bowl, some food coloring, and a fork to help mix. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna change my camera so you can see this. Cool. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to put some oil in our bowl. Let's take a look. You'll need about two tablespoons of oil, but you can kind of just eyeball it, just till it fills the bottom of the bowl. All right, now let's add a few drops of food coloring. It's up to you what colors you choose. I'm gonna do red and yellow and green. You'll just need a few drops, maybe three or four, and spread them around a little bit. Great. Now, take a look at that. Isn't that cool how the food coloring is staying separate from the oil? Huh. I wonder what that tells us about the density of the food coloring and the density of the oil. All right, let's give it a little mix. Even when I mix it, it still stays separate. It just kind of creates smaller circles. Hey, Marbles. Hey, Hannah. So I mixed together our food coloring and oil, and it didn't really mix. It just created those small circles. Yeah. What do you think that tells us about the densities of the food coloring and the oil? Well, I'll tell you, it reminded me so much of that experiment we did with food. You remember when you made lemonade? Yeah, I do remember that. Well, when you made lemonade, a lot of your ingredients were fine coming together. They kind of mixed and matched and made a delicious lemonade. But if you remember, I was making dinner, and it wasn't just for me. It was for him. And when we were making dinner, we were making some uh, salad dressing, and the oil and the vinegar just would not mix. And I shook it, and I shook it. And I shook it and it still didn't mix. And that's because the densities were different and they wouldn't combine. That's right. So what do you think this tells us then about the density of the food coloring and the density of the oil if it won't combine? Well, sounds like they're just different and they're very different. That's exactly right. Yeah. In fact, let's take a look at this. Yeah. Remember, density, I'm adding it, there we go. Density is a measurement of how much stuff is packed into a certain space. Yeah. When there's not that much stuff packed into a certain space, it is, a, we say, a low density. It has low density. But when there's a lot of stuff packed into a certain space, it has a pretty high density, right? And when things have very different densities, they don't really want to mix together. But when they have similar densities, they do want to mix together. Pretty cool. Totally. Hey, All yeah. right. Yeah, Marbles? I totally got this. I'm all over it. I'm so glad. All right, so now we're gonna add this to our water. So I'll bring you right back, okay? Yeah, why are you laughing at me? I just am. I, I, I don't know, I don't totally believe that you have it, but that's okay. All right. All right, so now is the fun part. In your clear glass, you're going to add some hot water. Fill it up most of the way, like that. Now's the fun part. Add your food coloring and oil to your water. So as you can see, the food coloring and water mix pretty well, but take a look at the top. You can see some of that food coloring still in with the oil, and if you look extra closely, you can see the food coloring is starting to drop down into the water, kind of like fireworks. Whoa. Great. So we've just created fireworks in a glass or in a jar. Now I will say it looks like our colors mix pretty well. So it's a little bit hard to see the fireworks, but if you try it again, maybe do a little bit less mixing with the pork. All right, well, let's go to Dr. Marbles and talk about what exactly happened here. Hey, Marbles. Hey, that's so cool. You made fireworks in a glass. 
Isn't that cool? I didn't need to go outside or anything. I brought it right indoors. Super cool. Well, yeah. I'm totally getting this now. It's like some of those things wanted to be together. They had densities that were more similar. And then that water and that oil, very different. They just didn't want to combine. I totally get like this. Well, what ingredients did want to combine? Marbles? Uh, the food coloring. And the? Oil. Not the oil, but the water, oh, right? The water. Sorry, sorry. Exactly. That's okay. Sometimes we make mistakes. But see at the top, look at that. At the top is just oil. That stays separate. Well, at the bottom, the food coloring and the water have mixed to create this really dark color. Ah, yeah. Pretty cool. Super so the oil has a very different density than the food coloring and the water, right? Really? Pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. I totally got this. I'm all okay. over it. All right. <laughs> I got this like oil and water. Oh, gosh. All right. We'll let that go. He doesn't totally get it yet, but that's okay. Now, for our next experiment, we're ready to do a little bit more celebrating because we're going to make boom, 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 lava lamps. Bam, lava lamps. Someone say lava lamp. I'm totally excited. Count me in. Awesome. All right. Now it's time to make our lava lamp. We're going to use the power of density to create something beautiful like a lava lamp. For this, you're gonna need very similar experiment, sorry, ingredients um, to, the sim to the previous experiment. Oh boy, I got so excited I'm jumbling my words. The first thing you're gonna need is a clear water bottle. Great for uh, recycling. You can also just use a clear glass too. I like the water bottle. You're gonna need oil. You're gonna need water. You're also gonna need food coloring. And here's the fun part. You're also gonna need Alka-Seltzer, and you'll see why. Okay, first thing is a little bit messy, so it's best to do this over a sink. I'm actually gonna do it over a bin, just in case I spill anything. You're gonna wanna fill your bottle up about 80% of the way, so most of the way, with vegetable oil. You can also use canola oil, or um, I don't know, really any other kind of cooking oil. All right, just like that, it's most of the way filled with oil. Okay, now you're gonna add in some water. Now before I add the water in, let's make a prediction. What do you think is gonna happen when we add the water and the oil? Prediction chicken! Hey Dr. Marbles, yeah. I was counting on you to come in and make a prediction. I'm glad you can make it. Love it. So All what, right. What's the question? Question is, I just added a bunch of oil to my water bottle and I'm about to add water. What's gonna happen when I add the water? Hmm. What's gonna happen when she adds the water to the oil? Come on, prediction chicken, you got it. What do you got? Oh yeah, you sure? What's he saying? You sure about that? Okay. Uh, Hannah, he says they're going to stay separate. Oh, and why does he think that? I didn't ask him. Hold on. Why do you think that? Seriously? Seriously? What is he saying? He says the densities are very different. Oh, you know what, Prediction Chicken? He's a smart one because I agree. It's just like what happened in our fireworks experiment, how they stayed separate. I think they're gonna stay separate when I add the water now. Well, let's check it out. Cool, let's do it. All right, time to add the water. I'm gonna fill in the water so it covers the rest of my water bottle. Whoa, take a look at that. You can already start to see some bubbles forming and the water is actually seems to be settling at the bottom of the bottle. All right, so it's gonna be a lot easier to see when we add some color, so let's do that. You can add in as much color as you want. I think I might add in some red. Just about three to five drops. All right. Look at that. The food coloring is already headed right down to the water. Cool. All right, now here's the fun part. I'm going to take my Alka-Seltzer tablet and break it into some small pieces. After you break it into small pieces, 
add it to your water bottle. Whoa, look at that. That's crazy. Oh my gosh, it's even spilling. Ah! Whoa, a real life lava lamp right here. We just made it. That's awesome. Okay, so what exactly is happening here? Let's go ahead and talk to Dr. Marbles. What? Hey, Dr. Marbles. Oh my God, Hannah, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Look, it's still going. Wait a minute. That's, that's like a real lava lamp. Yeah. So but, all of these bubbles of water are kind of going up and down and all around in my bottle of oil. Yeah, but Hannah, I got a question. Okay, what's your question? What's the whole thing with the Alka-Seltzer? That's a great question. Okay, so we already know that water and oil have very different densities, right? That's how they're able to stay separated. Now, the Alka-Seltzer helps the water to move around the bottle. Did you notice anything unusual when I first added the Alka-Seltzer, Dr. Marbles? I did. And you know what? It reminded me of one of my favorite commercials when I was a kid. What was that? It was plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. You mean this? You've got it? Mm -hmm. Apple seltzer, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. <laughs> I can't believe you had that. That is so cool. Well, tell us what was happening when we added the alka seltzer into the oil and water. The Alka-Seltzer re re reacted to the water. Hey, it caused a chemical reaction, Hannah. Exactly. And remember we talked about when there are chemical reactions, you've got these, you sometimes get heat, but sometimes you get bubbles. That's right. That's a bubble. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. When the water, sorry, when the Alka-Seltzer was added to our bottle, it yeah. caused a chemical reaction to occur with the water. So what happened was it produced those bubbles, those carbon dioxide bubbles, which are less dense. And if something is less dense than its surroundings, it's gonna float up to the top. Yeah. And, and once it hits the top, that's right. And once it hits the top, the gas is actually starting to pop and release from the top of the bottle then making the water more dense and sinking back down to the bottle. So we have this kind of circle of rising and falling bubbles. Oh my God, Hannah, I can't believe it. You know what I just thought? What did you just think of? You won't believe this. I might. Sometimes when my tummy's a little upset, I take an Alka-Seltzer. And you know what happens? What happens? <laughs> And Hannah, is that because the air goes up from my belly? That's exactly right, right? That air is the gas and it's not very dense. So it rises up and eh, burn. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really disgusting, but good connection, Marbles. Totally. Very cool. All right, well, I want to show something else. Normally, lava lamps look something like this. And it works the same way. At the bottom of the lava lamp is a lamp. Now that lamp heats up that liquid, making it less dense and floats to the top. By the time it reaches the top, it cools down and sinks back down again. So it works very similar to our homemade lava lamp. Pretty cool. All right, well, I'm so glad that we were able to experiment with some pretty cool experiments today. And I have something even cooler. Density is actually really important for so many different scientific careers. I was actually able to meet up with one of my friends, Dr. Gretchen Fougere, earlier this week and talk to her about how she uses density in her work as an engineer. Let's take a look at what she has to say. Dr. Gretchen Fougere, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Hannah. Awesome. Well, would you mind starting by just introducing yourself, saying how you're related to Science Club for Girls, and telling us a little bit about what you do? Sure. Um, my name is Dr. Gretchen Fougere. I'm an engineer, and I've been involved with Science Club for Girls for many years now. First as someone that got to go to a club and help girls learn about engineering. And now I'm the vice chair of the board, which means I get to 
help think about what Science Club Girls needs to do and wants to do long term to help more and more girls understand and love science, technology, engineering, and math. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, we're so happy to have you in our community. Um, so today's episode was all about density. We learned about how to make lava lamps and fireworks in a jar with density, which was awesome. And I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about how you use density in your work as an engineer. Sure. So I am a mechanical engineer, and density was really important to me in my first job as a mechanical engineer because I designed jet engines. And jet engines are what powers an airplane and makes it go high and makes it go far and makes it you know, carry people and goods long distances um, in the shortest amount of time. And what's important for jet engines is that they provide a lot of force to get the airplane um, flying fast, but they, they don't weigh too much. So in order for an engine to not weigh too much, we need something that's very low density or light with less matter in a, in a certain size. So if we think about this um, ping pong ball, What's inside the ping pong ball is air, right? And air is very um, low matter and very lightweight, which means this ping pong ball is low density. But think about if I filled up this ping pong ball with salt or sand or water or something, it actually in the same size ping pong ball would be more dense or heavier. So in a jet engine, we want to do, use materials in our designs that are low density and do the job, but don't weigh too much. So that way we don't spend too much money on gas and we don't impact the environment and we can carry more people in that plane over long distances. Wow, that's awesome. So density plays a really important part in thinking about what materials to choose and how to design your jet engines. Yeah, that's right. And engineers are really lucky people because we get to use math and science. And we get to use art and design and actually think about how to draw something and how to make sure it's going to work and how to build something and, and use our hands to do that stuff. And one of the other really cool things about engineering is that it helps people and you get to work in a team to do that work. That's really cool. And it sounds like you have to think pretty creatively too to come up with solutions to problems. Oh yeah. And the creativity part is what's really fun because you get to think for a little while and you get to try some stuff and you get to put it together and talk to people about what works and what doesn't work. And it's always about learning from failure. And failure sounds like a scary, bad word, but actually it's fun because you say, okay, that didn't work. What am I going to try again with my friends? That's awesome. So that kind of leads us into our last question, which is that there's probably a lot of young people watching this who are inspired by your work as an engineer. And I'm wondering if you have any advice for them. I love engineering because it helps people. and We design uh, technologies that solve problems, like problems with the environment or problems with transportation or problems with getting enough food for people. And it's all about thinking about the math and the science that you're learning in school and, and applying it and, and making it real and making it come true. And it's not easy, but it's, it's worthwhile and it's fun. And you can constantly grow and learn. And um, my advice would be to find something that you really care about. And it could be um, helping people and staying healthy. It could be helping people and making sure they have enough food to eat. It could be helping people and make sure they stay safe as they move around. And engineers are the ones that are designing all those technologies, the trains, the planes, the cars, the, um, you know, any kind of system that helps people um, live healthy and, and uh, healthy, healthy, healthy and happy lives. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was great to hear about your work as an engineer and how it relates to density. And I uh, hope to have you on the show pretty soon. Thank you, Hannah, and everybody out there, keep safe and keep learning about science, technology, engineering, and math. Thank you. Wow, that was awesome. I loved hearing about how she used density to design jet engines for airplanes. Who would have thought that density was so important and beautiful too? All right, well, let's go to Dr. Marbles to see if he has any last words. Hey! Hey, Marbles, I love your decoration. Well, I'm getting ready for the fourth. That's right. Yes, it's, no, not yesterday. Tomorrow, right? Hey, Hannah, I just wanted to say that Dr. Fugier is so cool. There were a couple things she said that really struck me. What was that? Well, one was the creativity of science and engineering, that you get to try things and create things and sometimes create things that are brand new. And the other thing she said that I thought was really cool, because cool. I'm sometimes scared of it, is failing. 
And it's okay because if you don't try, sometimes you never know. That's and right. I thought that was great. And, and then also when she said that engineers, they can help people and they can make big differences in people's lives. I don't know. I just thought that was really cool. She seems amazing. Yeah, that's right. And this actually reminds me of our very first thing we talked about with Cecilia's experiment. In fact, Cecilia actually didn't even know what to expect when combining those uh, ingredients together. She yeah. originally had a different experiment in mind, but she didn't have those materials available. So she had to use what she had available and she created something pretty beautiful from it. So I think that's a true scientist way of thinking. Yep. Really incredible. Very cool. Well, thanks. you have to say, yeah, what, what's that? Oh, I was just going to say thanks for having me on the show. And it's oh. great seeing you guys, scientists. Of course. I did want to say that we will be off for the next two weeks. So yeah. our next show will be, I believe, the 20th, yeah, 24th of July. So enjoy your time off. Keep experimenting at home. There's so many um, things to do and, and so many different resources. Um, go ahead and visit our website at scienceclubforgirls.org for more information. But otherwise, it's been a great episode of SCFG Live. Bye, scientists. Bye.